everything you need to know in order to start your YouTube career. Hey guys, it's Chad. Recently at all of the mind fairs I've been going to, and by the way, I still have a ton to go to, so please check out ongchad.com slash calendar to see all the different mind fairs I'm going to, and I'll talk a little bit about that in like 45 minutes at the end of the video. Um, but at all these mind fairs I've been going to, I've been doing this talk about how to become a YouTuber. Many people have been asking me to upload that to YouTube, so I decided, hey, here we go, let's talk about it. So I'm gonna uh, do a different format than I normally do, show off my keynote slides. So let's jump over to, to see the slides. So here we are, this is actually the setup that I use to stream with, uh, and I'm just using it to capture the slides that I show off during my Mindfair presentations. Um, so I'm just gonna go through this and kind of give you some context also, because sometimes I do stuff in the presentation that's a little bit different than showing it here on YouTube. Uh, and so let's go ahead and just get started. First, I talk to people about who I am because people who just happen to be walking by the presentation may not actually know uh, who I am, what I do. There's just a random red guy or guy with red hair just talking to them. You know, who, who is this guy? What is it? What is his credential? So I go through uh, that. I'm 29. I live in Dallas. I have three cats, so one dog. And of course, we're at a Minecraft convention. So I love Minecraft. Now, here's a quick summary of my job, basically, of, of my career up until this point. I'll go ahead and fade out so you guys can read this a little bit easier. Uh, this is sort of my career path so far. I started uploading videos in high school in 2006, probably before some of you watching this video uh, were born. Uh, I quit YouTube and started my jo a job in construction. So I got these... Uh, these guns yeah you can see all these muscles um and uh, so anyway i like to mention that because a lot of you guys starting your youtube you may start you may stop there's bumps along the whole path don't worry about it you don't have to if if you have stopped uploading videos don't worry you can always get back into it uh back then you couldn't make any money with uh youtube so i decided to go into podcasting so i knew a guy named brian brushwood uh so i asked for a job from him got a job with him he knew that i wanted to get more into the podcasting industry so i used my contacts with him to land a job at a company called twit twit stands for this week in tech it's a podcast company uh covering the technology space and uh, uh, near uh, san francisco so i moved out to san francisco from austin texas then, while working at that company, I started OMG Craft, the channel that you're watching this video on. Uh, then I started my own personal Let's Play channel, OMG Chad. Then, two years later, after starting OMG Craft, I was able to, with my personal channel and uh, my OMG Craft channel, and with a whole bunch of other things that I do, uh, make YouTube my full-time job. Then I started a gaming or joined a gaming community called Minecraft in 2014. And currently it's 2018. OMG Craft is going pretty good so far, I have to say. It gets about 3 million views a month in that range. Um, but you can see from 2012 to 2014, when I was able to make YouTube my full time job, I took two years of working really, really, really hard in order to get to the point where YouTube was sustainable for me to uh, fully make it my, my job. So moving on, before we start talking about all the things, this is an adorable photo of my, of my cat waffles here on, a, uh, on one of the command, on the command blocks actually behind me um, on the set. It's, those are real blocks. Some of you guys think it's a green screen. Those are not, those are real blocks. Um, but before we begin, I like to let you guys know that Everything you need to learn can be learned uh, online. Uh, and I'm going to go into some pretty broad things. This is normally a 30 minute talk, and hopefully, we're going to keep it within that uh, time limit for this video. But uh, so I'm going to go through some stuff that's really, really broad. And when you need to know more, Google is your friend. I'm going to mention a whole bunch of stuff, but like maybe I'll mention OBS. Like that's a software that I use to record my videos with. Um, I'm not going to go into how to set everything up. I'm not going to go into how to do all of the settings or uh, if, if you have a Macintosh, how to make sure that you can make that work. You know, I'm not going to do that. You need to use Google. You need to use tools uh, your own to research some of your issues. So if you if you specifically with Minecraft and OBS, Google how to record Minecraft with OBS. 
there you go. There's plenty of tutorials out there for you. If you're wondering, like l later, I'll talk about computers. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail exactly what type of computer you want. Also, uh, over time, things change, you know, different settings change, different uh, uh, qualifications for types of computers change. Google, best computer to record Minecraft Let's Plays with. Uh, Google is your friend, uh, but you can learn absolutely everything there is to learn, except one thing. There is a single thing that you can't learn. Uh, and when I say, by the way, when I say uh, every, you can learn everything, I mean, you can learn all the techniques. You can learn te editing. You can learn recording. You can even learn to become funnier than you are right now. You can take improv classes or uh, read books on on making jokes, that sort of stuff, uh, on script writing. I mean, everything really can be learned, except for a single thing, and that is motivation. Motivation cannot be learned, and you need it to start this YouTube journey. Uh, it took, remember, 2006 was when I started uploading my first video. It's 2018 right now, okay? That took a long time before I found myself where I am now today with my career. And if I didn't have motivation along the way to keep pushing when videos weren't getting views, when frustrating things happen, uh, if you don't have motivation throughout the whole process, you're going to be really, really, really uh, at a disadvantage and probably give up halfway through and not accomplish your goal of making YouTube a full time job. So you need to ask yourself, is this your passion or are you just trying to do this to make money or are you doing this to make content? If you're only doing this to make money, you're probably in it for the wrong reasons and you're probably going to burn yourself out and not get very far. Remember, uh, even after restarting, after years of gaining years of experience between 2006 and 2012, it still took two years. And in those two years, I was uploading two videos a week for two years. Uh, and all those videos got like less than 100 views. So uh, uh, all of that is to say that you still need passion, even if you're not going to be making a paycheck. If you're in this to learn a new skill, if you're in this to have fun, to maybe make videos that make your friends laugh, or uh, you're really in this for the long, long, long haul that you want to do this for your entire life, those are good reasons to go into becoming a YouTuber. Doing it just to be a millionaire, just to make a whole bunch of money, uh, you're probably in it for the wrong reason, and, and you probably shouldn't uh, try, uh, <laughs> really. I mean, it's just going to be so difficult for you uh, if for two years you you can't you know pull a good paycheck, uh, it's going to be really bad. You need to figure out your motivation now. Next. Now I'm going to go through, I'm going to go through basically every step in the process to becoming a YouTuber. And uh, most people go directly from, okay, I'm ready to go to start to record your content. Well, there's a few steps in the process that you should take before you jump in uh, feet first. And that is to figure out your content. What I mean by that is really know what you're going to record and you have a whole bunch of options for you. Uh, we're talking on a Minecraft channel and normally I do this at a Minecraft convention. So probably you're going to be a recording Minecraft, but you could do really anything. You could do vlogs, you could do beauty, you could do shopping, you could do tutorials, you could do really everything. So what is your content going to be about is really the first question that you need to ask people. Some people focus on the story of maybe your life or they just focus on playing a game and showing off what the game is capable of. I have a tip for you guys in order to make this a little bit easier for yourself and for you to get more views in the future. And that is to make your content specific or niche. Make it something that not a lot of people are doing and you'll get more views quicker. An example of that is with OMG Craft, we focus on how-to videos and tutorials. Every once in a while, we'll do a spotlight around the community of something that's pretty big, but mostly it is how-to videos and tutorials. We don't, I don't do gameplay. I don't do a let's play. I don't do role play. I don't do that sort of thing on OMG Craft. I, I kind of experimented with it in the past, but I don't do it at all anymore. Uh, it is only tutorial videos. So in the whole big world of Minecraft, you have so many options. You could do scripted skits. You could do a let's play just of your world. You could do how-to videos like me. I mean, there's so many things that you could really dive into to make all of your content really, really specific. And that will help you gain views in the future because being specific means that you can offer something that other people aren't. If you're too broad and too open, audience members kind of don't know what to expect. And so they may not subscribe to you because some one day you're doing how-to videos, the next day you're doing let's play videos, the next day you're doing role play videos. 
it can kind of work in your advantage if you're kind of already big, but when you're trying to gain an audience in the beginning, it's much easier to be pretty specific. Maybe you only do redstone builds and that's it. And you gain a, a following of people who do redstone builds. Don't hold yourself back also because sometimes if you become known for one thing, you can always transition into something uh, in the future. Being really, really good at one thing and then moving on to something else never hurt anybody, okay? It didn't hurt uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, okay? He was really good at, at, at bodybuilding, transition that into acting, transition that into, into government work. So like l being good at one thing, going really, really far in one area, and then transitioning is always an option. So I would say focus, focus, focus. My next tip is to do something that others can't do. If you are the only person doing something in a field, then obviously you're going to get views because you're the only one doing it. Nobody else can turn to anybody else. Uh, I sometimes suggest if you have a dog that can play Minecraft, you know, record him. Obviously, that's pretty specific and pretty. I mean, that would be like superhero level amazing. Um, but if you have an angle, if you have something different about you, uh, maybe you have a learning disability. Maybe you have a talent that nobody else has. If you can use those to your advantage and cover a, an area, a topic in a way that nobody else can, that's a huge advantage. So try to do something that nobody else is doing. Also, when it comes to the content, you have a few decisions to make. You can make content that makes itself or you can make the content. And let me explain a little bit between these two things. Content that makes itself, the, an example of that would be you jumping into a world, hitting record and showing it off. Or jumping onto a server with your friends, hitting record, the interaction between your friends is really the content. And what happens, happens and that's in the video. Content that you make, so content, not that content that makes itself, but content that you make is something that you really need to sit down, think about, plan out, make, edit, so an, uh, an example of that is OMG Craft. OMG Craft, I don't just sit down and turn on the camera. I have to think about it. I have to script it out sometimes. I have to research it, test it out, and then I can record a video. Uh, there's pros and cons to both of these. Content that makes itself is a little bit easier for you to jump into in the beginning. Really, you're just hitting record and whatever happens, happens, and that's your video. But content that you make uh, can become more desirable to a larger audience maybe later on once you've got your feet on the ground and got your legs underneath you. Uh, things like role plays, those are content that you have to make, that you have to script out, that you have to come up with characters and really put some thought into. But content that makes itself like jumping into jumping onto a popular server and just showing it off, playing some mini games, see how you do, uh, that can be very easy to record and publish. Next, another idea whenever coming up with ideas for content is to follow the trends. If there's something big that's happening and you can cover it and you can show it off, this is a great way to get an outside audience to come into your videos. I've covered videos about Fortnite, fidget spinners, and dabbing uh, in order to follow some trends uh, and hopefully get people who wouldn't wouldn't normally click on my videos to click on my videos to get a, a larger audience. So following trends is a tip in order for you guys to uh, to use to, to get a bigger audience in the future. Now it is time, once you've figured out your content, to record your content. And I'm gonna go down a laundry list of items and things that you need to have in order to start recording your videos. And these are gonna be from most important to least important. And a lot of people are surprised by what I normally, what I know is the most important piece of equipment that you need to have nailed down and absolutely wonderful in your videos. And I may be giving it away a little bit because we have a, a big old photo of a microphone and that is your microphone. Your audio is way more important than your video. Why? Because as humans, we hear 100% of whatever's coming through our headphones or whatever's coming through the speakers, we hear it all. But whenever you look at something, you really only ever look at like 2% of the entire screen. If you're over here looking at my face, you're not reading record and microphone. If you're over there reading the words, you're not looking at this beautiful image of a microphone. If you're looking at the beautiful image of a microphone, you're not looking at anywhere else on the screen. So hearing is 100% of everything you hear, but seeing is really a small percentage. So if your video is a little bit laggy, a little bit grainy, a little bit off color, people can get over that. But if you 
have scratchy audio. You're difficult to hear. You're far away from the microphone. There's a dog barking in the background or your brother or sister yelling in the background. That is so difficult to listen to. Many people will turn away from your videos. To, uh, a suggestion. And remember what I said before, Google is your friend. Google, how do I have good audio in my Let's Plays? How do I have good audio in my Minecraft videos? A quick tip is to have a headset that has a separate uh, microphone and heads, headset uh, and, and uh, uh, headphones, I should say. Uh, any type of normal gaming headset is a great place to start. I use this microphone that's in this photo right here. This is a Heil PR40. It's a really expensive microphone. You don't have to go this high quality in the beginning. Uh, you can, as long as you have an extra, a microphone that isn't built into your camera or built into your webcam that you can get your mouth much closer to, you're already off to a great start. That's a great beginning uh, to record uh, your videos. Next, number two on the list is a good computer. I didn't say a fantastic gaming computer, just a good computer. A little bit above average. Remember, Google's your friend, Google. Good video, good computer to record Minecraft videos. Uh, and you should be able to get some specs and some options for you to uh, to buy if you need to upgrade your computer. But if you have a computer that's a little bit above average, you're going to be just fine. Minecraft is a resource intensive game, unfortunately, especially when it comes to RAM or memory inside of your computer. Um, and also recording software will use up a lot of CPU in order to take those frames and throw them onto your hard drive. So you do need a little bit of an above average computer. Next is what will you record with in the laundry list of things? And I suggest OBS. It's what I'm using to record this video right now. It stands for open broadcast software. Open broadcast software or OBS is completely free. It's rather user friendly and it works pretty great. Uh, so uh, great price tag, really user friendly and uh, good performance. Um, I, I've used it for years and years and years. I have good tutorials on it, but seriously, just Google OBS for recording Minecraft uh, and you'll get plenty of tutorials on how to set up and use OBS for yourself. Next, lower on the list is a webcam. I'm using a webcam now to record my videos. It's not needed, so this could actually be struck off the list if you uh, if you don't want it. Uh, if you're gonna go into streaming, like on Mixer or Twitch, or really any streaming platform, uh, it is good to have a face cam. There's, it's just weirdly statistical that people really do want to see the streamer whenever you're streaming. So I would suggest a webcam. If your parents say, you know what, I don't want you to have a webcam. Uh, I don't want you to, or it's too difficult for you to figure out how to overlay your webcam on top of the video. This can be struck off the list. You don't need one. And really uh, any, any webcam that you go and buy at uh, like Best Buy or Target or Walmart or Tesco, wherever you happen to be. I don't even know if Tesco sells webcams. Um, will be just good. Uh, really, any camera on the market is going to be high definition, have plenty of frame, frame rate, and you also normally are shrinking the webcam like into a corner like I am, so you don't even need it to be that great of quality. Next is editing software, and on, whoa, I don't know why that thing is uh, working like that, but it uh, looks like I'm a little bit low frame rate on uh, the on the background there. But anyway, editing software, and once again, this is actually the last thing on the list, and it's kind of the most difficult to get right. Unfortunately, I have not found a good free editing software uh, and that's easy to use. It's user friendly. That just really doesn't exist. I personally use Adobe Premiere Pro, but that does cost a lot per month and is rather cumbersome when it comes to learning how to use it. I learned how to use uh, my editing software in high school. I took a high school elective media class and we learned how to edit there and that is really where I learned all of my editing skills is from high school. So if you can take a class, this is really one of the only things that I would, that you you can Google it. Remember, Google's your friend. Uh, you can Google it. Uh, sometimes it's good to have a teacher there to be able to walk you through if something isn't going your way instead of uh, trying to Google why isn't video showing up? You know, in my editing software, it's normally a little bit better to learn this. And unfortunately, I don't really have a good recommendation for a inexpensive editing software. The one workaround that I do have is for you to not edit your videos is if you can just hit record, say everything you need to say in one take and then hit stop. 
you'll be given a video file if you use OBS and you can just upload that video file and without any editing required. If you mess up, just say, whoops, I messed up. I meant to say blank, blank, blank. Just do it all live. That's actually a really good skill. I'm using it right now, you know, right here in this video. It's just to say what you want to say and, and get it out there without any editing required. It's going to speed up making videos. It's a great skill to have. So if you can, just don't edit at all. That's why this is the very last thing on the list of things you need. Now that you have figured out your content, you have figured out how to record your content, it is time to actually make the content. And first and foremost, you will need to practice before you get good. You are going to probably be bad at making videos before you are really good at making videos. So practice makes perfect. For me personally, the first Let's Play I ever uploaded, it took me five tries to get it right. And those were, that was a 30 minute long video. So it took me five times of recording a 30 minute long video before I was happy with the content in order to upload it. It still wasn't perfect. And it has taken me years and years and years and years of recording content to finally feel pretty okay with what I record. So you will need to practice uh, I, if you want to, uh, this is a great suggestion. Also, this is a suggestion for people whose parents don't want you to upload videos is make videos, try and, and make your videos, edit your videos, just don't publish them. That's actually a really good tip. If your parents will are forbidding you from making YouTube videos, you may say, can I just make videos and not publish them to YouTube or make videos and only share them or upload them as unlisted, which means that they're not published anywhere on YouTube. They're not on your user page. Only people with the link can see it and send that link to my close friends at school. That's a great way to get started making content is to is to practice making content. Don't actually pub publish it for the world to see. Just publish it so that your friends can see. Um, so that's a good idea. Next, while you're making your content, you should watch your length. When it comes to YouTube, for some random reason, I'm going to deactivate and reactivate this background here because we're getting some weird stuff going on. When it comes to YouTube, for some reason, 10 minutes is a great time length. Not only is that good for later on when you monetize your videos, you'll be able to put two ad breaks into a video, which means that you'll be able to monetize twice as much. But for some reason, the YouTube algorithm prefers 10 minute long videos, so they'll serve them up better. So above 10 minutes is a really good length, but I wouldn't go more than 30 minutes. We're going to see if we if we pull that off in this video, because this is probably going to be a very long video. I would suggest less than 30 minutes because people tend to not want to stick around for more than 30 minutes to watch a video. Um, now, I am also, uh, I'm, I'm guilty of this, is making videos that are way shorter than 10 minutes. You should really make sure that your content is good and whatever length that it ends up being is whatever length it ends up being. If it's less than 10 minutes, no big deal. Uh, you know, just I think that you should really focus on making quality content versus quality that is a specific length. So now you have made the content. It is time to edit your content. Once again, this is the hardest piece of the puzzle, but I'm going to give you a few tips is first off, figure out your edit style. You can decide that you want to go into a edit with very minimal edits, just cut out things where you may be tripped up on saying a word or two and you can just take that out and that's it. Or you could go crazy heavy style like PewDiePie style or any of those styles where the camera is zooming in on your face and all oh, there's there's sound effects and explosions and things like that. You could do whatever you want when it comes to your edit style. I would just say try to figure it out and uh, and and maybe try to be a little bit consistent with it. One thing that you have to do is edit out any fluff anytime before, like when you hit record and you're still trying to kind of figure out how to get into the groove of recording your video. Take that out. Anytime that you pause and think for a while about something or you stumble on your wor words, edit that out. A tip for you is that your audience will never miss any content that they never saw. What I mean by that is if you are in your edit and you have maybe you went on a tangent about something, you went you you were trying to show off your build, but then you went on a tangent on your dog and you're trying to decide, should I leave this in or should I cut it out? I really like me talking about my dog, but I can understand how some of the audience might not want me to go on this big, big, long tangent that lasts maybe a minute or two. What should I do? Should I cut it out or should I leave it in? I really like the content. I would lean on the side of cutting it out because the audience 
will not realize that they missed you talking about your dog if it's gone. Uh, and it will probably make your video shorter and more concise. So if you're on the fence of whether to cut something out or to leave it in, I'd say err on the side of cutting it out because nobody in the audience is going to think what happened to that moment where you're talking about your dog because they never saw it in the first place. So I'd lean on the side of editing it out. Now that you have figured out your content, figured out how to record, recorded, edited, it is time to publish your video. The first thing you need to worry about is your thumbnail. This is top of the list. If you spent two weeks working on a video and you didn't spend enough time on the thumbnail and nobody clicks on your video because you have a crummy default thumbnail, what was all of that work worth? Because if people don't click, it's basically not worth all of the work. Once again, Google is your friend. You, there's plenty of people who go so in-depth. There's probably 30 minute long tutorials on how to make great looking thumbnails. Just Google how to make good YouTube thumbnails. And there's plenty of techniques. Tube Filter has a fantastic article about it on all different techniques that you can use to make good thumbnails. I would suggest really focusing on your thumbnails. Next is time for tags, titles, and descriptions. These are words that, that YouTube will use in order to serve up your video or just to catch someone's eye. Personally, on OMG Craft, we use these a lot because we are very search results based. If you search how to tame a horse and I've been able to put that into my tags, title and description, my video will most likely be served before a video that doesn't have all of that in the tags, title and description. Especially if your search results based, you really need to focus on your tags, titles and descriptions. If you're more story based or audience based where uh, maybe it's like a episodic content. You don't need to focus on this quite as much because people, if it's episode three or of a six episode series, people will probably tune into it whether or not it has a really striking title or, or description. Next, a tip for you publishing is to have a schedule. Your audience, if you, uh, first off, if you publish a really, really good video and it takes off and it has legs, Here's what the audience is going to do. They're going to see that video. They're going to think, I really like this video. They're going to click in. Some of them, a percentage of them are going to click on your channel and see what else you have uploaded. And if you haven't uploaded a video after that video or that video was uploaded three months before the, the last, you know, the last upload you had is three months old or uh, really it's just a dead channel and that's the only video on it. People aren't going to subscribe because there is no expectation of future videos. But if you've been uploading one video a week consistently for a long time, when they go to your channel, they'll see that it's in a live channel, that there's more content to come. That is when they subscribe. So you should try to, once you've uploaded one video, follow it up with another video after that, another video after that, and so on for eternity if you can do it. Also, your audience, if they are a subscriber and they're excited about your content, will change their lifestyle in order to watch your videos. On OMG Craft, we try, and we don't always succeed, but we try to get three videos up a week, one on Tuesday, one on Thursday, and one on Saturday. We've kind of been failing in the past few months because this has been a very, very, very busy time for me. Did I mention that I'm uh, hosting Minecon Earth on September 29th? Uh, so it's been a little bit of a uh, crazy month for me. So my schedule hasn't been all that great, but at least the channel is still alive and still uploading videos. If you can, let your audience know what day and what time you upload because they will come back to your channel at that date and that time to check out of your videos. The next thing is publish times. For some reason, or not for some reason, but this is just how it works, is YouTube will look at the first moments of your video being live and determine if they think, if YouTube thinks that that is going to be a popular video or an unpopular video. So if your video gets a higher than average views in the first few moments of it being published, then it will determine this was probably a popular video and then YouTube will make it more popular on your behalf by putting it into the subscription box, by putting it into the sidebar, by serving it all over. YouTube has plenty of ways to get your video views and the YouTube algorithm will work on your behalf by its own accord if it thinks that your video is going to be a good video, YouTube, YouTube's algorithm wants to serve popular videos. And by trying to serve popular videos, it makes those videos more popular. So you should upload your videos at times when people are awake and home 
in order to get that first boost at the beginning of your videos. Uh, try A lot of people try to aim for prime time. Uh, normally, this is a, 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 an old uh, like TV uh, time slot is when people are home from work uh, right before they go to bed is a, is a nice uh, prime time. Google, what is prime time in my area? Remember, YouTube is a worldwide platform. So if you look at your analytics, you may see that you have a big audience in, the, in Europe, in the US, uh, in you know South America, I'm not sure, but wherever you're getting a big number of your audience, you should aim for them. Uh, you should aim your times for them. Now you have published your video. You're done, right? Oh man, we have figured out the content, recorded, edited, published. It's done finally. Nope, nope, you're not done. You are your own PR agency. It is time for you to share your videos, you need to publicize that you have made your video. Just publishing it isn't enough. So if your parents allow you, or you have uh, your own social media platforms, go ahead and publish your videos there. Share it on your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. I don't care. Just try to share your video to get views uh, from your closest and most uh, uh, loyal fans. If you can't uh, do that, don't worry. Uh, if, you, if your parents won't allow you to have social media platforms, just try to share it individually. Don't be a pest, though. Nobody likes to be solicited on videos. Uh, and also do it where it is allowed. Lots of people come into my personal Discord and try to share their videos in the general chat. That's just not in the rules. Uh, you don't want to go into people's random uh, Twitch you know, chat rooms and share your videos. That is just That's just frowned upon. So do it where it's acceptable on your own platform platforms, but make sure that you have your own platforms in order to do it. If not, if your parents don't allow you, it's fine. It's just one step that might uh, help your videos out. Also, on all of your social media platforms, including YouTube, this is where you will get feedback, either in the comments section below your video or on Twitter or wherever you happen to be publishing it. Quick note on feedback. It can be very, very hurtful. You can get really, really hurtful feedback. You are a person, I am a person, but a lot of people online don't take the time to think about what their comments will do to how you feel about uh, your video. Um, so sometimes you need to take feedback with a, with a grain of salt, which means you can kind of discount a lot of it. But other times you really do need to think about the type of uh, feedback that your audience is giving you. Uh, maybe someone comments, this is boring. Well, that really could hurt. This could, that could really be uh, a hurtful thing to hear. Uh, you could just completely discount that and say, that person's a hater. That person's just trying to make me feel bad. Or you could kind of take that to heart and think, how could I make my videos more exciting? Maybe I need to change up my edit style. Maybe I need to worry about how quickly I'm saying what comes to mind. Maybe I can make my videos less boring. Let me Google how to make YouTube videos less boring and learn a few techniques on how to make my videos better. Uh, so sometimes you need to take it with a grain of salt. Sometimes you need to take that feedback as constructive criticism and use it to your advantage. Now we're gonna get to the point that tons of people love to learn about and that is money. Let's talk about making money on YouTube. And the first question is, how do you make money on YouTube? The way that YouTubers make money is YouTube will place ads beside, below, on top of, around, in between the videos that we make. And if it plays on our channel, we will make as YouTubers 45%, sorry, I spit, 45% of whatever those ads make. We're talking pretty small numbers. If you happen to click on an ad, and I don't suggest that you just go around clicking on people's ads because YouTube can tell that and it's not, not good. Uh, but if you naturally see an ad that speaks to you and you click it, then that ad will probably generate around 10 cents maybe, okay? Very, very small. And then you get 45% of that. So you just made as a YouTuber 4.5 cents. Take that to McDonald's. We can normally generally expect that for 1,000 views on a video, you'll make around a dollar. It can be less, it can be more. I've seen as little as 50 cents. I've seen as high as $5 is a normal high price. I've seen even as high as $15 on 1,000 views in a video. 
Normally, if you see a YouTuber and you know how many views they're making, you can generally figure out about how much, mo uh, how much money they're making per month by taking their monthly views and dividing it by a thousand. And that's, uh, you know, a thousand is a dollar. So a thousand is one. And then you can figure out just about how much money they make. Um, now, in order to make money, you need to be part of the YouTube partner program. Once again, there's a thing to Google the credentials or the, the requirements that you need in order to be, join the YouTube partner program are changing. They actually just recently changed quite a lot. Sometimes there's subscriber goals that you need to hit viewer, uh, viewer milestones that you need to hit a certain amount of views per month. You, uh, the, all of that kind of changes a little bit uh, from time to time. So Google how to join the YouTube partner program. Multi-channel networks. Let's talk about multi-channel networks. The, uh, these are a little bit of a more arcane thing, but you may be approached by a multi-channel network. What are they? YouTube in the past, this is like ancient YouTube history, had a problem. And the problem was they could not sell advertisements fast enough on their platform. So they turned to a third party, not YouTube, another company that are uh, lots of companies that kind of generated to sell ads on behalf of YouTube partners. So a YouTube partner would sign with a multi-channel network. The multi-channel network would then say to advertisers, we have, and, and they would sign a whole bunch of them, not just one. They would say, we have a thousand YouTubers. All of these YouTubers are specifically in Minecraft gaming. Anybody who wants to sell advertisements specifically on Minecraft gaming, come talk to us and we'll sell ads on the YouTube platform on YouTube's behalf. And normally they could get a higher price than YouTube because they were so specific. These ad pools are ways that, uh, that they would be able to make more money for you. So you as a YouTuber go to a multi-channel network or they normally come to you. They email you all the time and they say, I will take a part of your ad revenue. So you take 45, remember you're taking 45% of whatever YouTube is taking. So from that 45%, they'll take an additional percentage. I've seen it as low as 0% where they're actually paying the YouTuber even. Uh, I've seen it as low as that or as high as like 30%. So it could be in that range. Let's say theoretic, let's just say for the sake of, of, of us talking, let's say they come to you and say for 15% of your revenue, we're going to uh, give you these better ads. So the idea is they get you 30% more revenue because they're selling more ads on your behalf and then they'll take 15% of your revenue. That is the trade-off when it comes to multi-channel networks. Also, some multi-channel networks will give you extra things. I've heard of people getting uh, visas to come uh, work in America. I've heard of people getting better ad rates or, or getting uh, integrations, YouTube integrations. There's a ton of things that multi-channel networks can do on YouTubers' behalf. But I would say caution, caution, caution when it comes to choosing a multi-channel network. You should really, really know everything there is to know about multi-channel networks before you sign in with one and give away a portion of your revenue to a multi-channel network. A lot of smaller YouTubers that it's just absolutely not needed to have a multi-channel network unless if they are going to give you something very beneficial for a part of your revenue. So until you are big enough to have talked to other YouTubers about it, to be able to talk to multiple multi-channel networks, I would say stay away from multi-channel networks or MCNs that want to sign you on and take a cut of your revenue. There are some bad players that literally all they do is take your revenue, offer you maybe a subscription to Epidemic Sound or whatever, and that's it. So seriously, a whole bunch of caution when it comes to multi-channel networks. I'm gonna cover a few other ways that you can make money uh, using your YouTube. First is merchandise. Normally when I'm giving this uh, talk at a mind fair, I'm like, hey, my booth is right over there. I'm selling some merchandise. I sell merchandise on the website, helloomg.com. So you can buy merchandise from me. Uh, it is something that I would suggest only uh, larger YouTubers should focus on. If you're a smaller, just starting out YouTuber, you could do something where it is a, a print on demand service. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these uh, like Spreadshirt, Teespring, I even think Designed by Humans and, uh, you know, Cafe Press. All of these are things where you make a design, you put it up there, but they're not going to make it until someone buys it and then they'll ship it on your behalf. That means that you don't have to buy 500 shirts, keep them around in your garage and ship them one by one. You don't have any overhead. So that's how I would say uh, uh, starting off YouTubers uh, could get started. If you happen to be big enough, this is an area that you could go into. 
Next is streams. You can stream on Twitch or Mixer. And for some reason, it is more acceptable to kind of ask for money on a stream than it is to ask for money on YouTube. Also, streams are live. So you can do things like, hey, if we get $100, I'll put mayonnaise on my head or whatever. Or, hey, if we get a $10 donation, I'll blow up my house in Minecraft. Uh, so streams, you can ask for money a little bit better. Um, and once again, Google how to start a stream, how to take donations on a stream, how to set up my stream on Twitch or Mixer or wherever. Um, and those are another way to, uh, to make money. Next is through some type of crowdfunding so, uh, service. I put Patreon here, but I have, I know of Game Wisp and I know of a few other uh, crowdfunding services. Basically, you ask your audience to fund you. I have a Patreon patreon.com slash omg chat um and uh basically you ask your audience to support you either month by month or by every video that you publish like let's say they'll give you a dollar for every video you publish and that way you can make extra income when you're smaller uh, this works for small creators and big creators and so that's just another way for you to make money now we're going to get on to a few other notes that I just want to make sure to touch on. We're getting near the end, as you can probably tell by the timeline at the bottom. My first thing is that you should really stick with it. If you remember way back at the beginning of this talk, thanks for uh, sitting with me. I can tell that we're already like 40 minutes long here. Um, I, I, it took me from 2006 to 2014 to finally make it my full time job. You're going to run into speed bumps. You're going to run into things in your life that make it difficult to make uh, make content. You might start and stop a few times. All of that is totally fine as long as you continue to stick with it uh, and and just try. Try over and over. Uh, if if you ever uh, have a problem, you know what? That Use it as a learning uh, 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 learning and learning time, learning, learning lesson um, and move on and and just try to come back with it. Next is you will fail before you succeed. You never, ever, ever in life pick up something and can do it fantastically the first time. You're going to make mistakes. You're not going to be probably very proud of the things that you're making in the beginning. Use all of that to learn, to try to become better, to become better at this craft, learn techniques, talk to other people who are doing it and learn from them as well. You're going to not be all that great in the beginning. You're going to have to fail before you succeed. You're going to have to fail a few times uh, before you succeed. Next is to be yourself. I say this, I like to say this to people who are just starting off because uh, you can sometimes use as a crutch trying to kind of act like another YouTuber that you like. Let's say let's say that I'm your favorite YouTuber ever. So I'm, this is a kind of a, a big headed uh, thing to say. But anyway, let's assume you're you're a huge OMG Craft fan and you want to become just like OMG Craft. You can try to copy absolutely everything I do, my style, my edit style, my intro, uh, really everything. But I'll give you some kind of harsh news is you're only ever going to be second best when it comes to another YouTuber. They're always gonna be the better version. If you're, let's say Dan TDM, I don't wanna talk about myself. Let's say you love Dan TDM and you wanna be just like him and you make all your videos almost exactly like he makes his videos. Dan TDM is gonna be a better version of Dan TDM than you are. But if you try to be yourself with your own quirks, your own things that you like and hate, you are going to be the best version and the best YouTuber because nobody else can compete. You're always going to be number one in your category as you. So try not to follow. You can take inspiration from other YouTubers. In fact, and, and also getting started, you may want to copy other people's things just to learn the ropes. But as you move forward, you should really focus on being yourself. It's going to make your your job a lot easier because you won't have to act. You won't have to put on a, a, a play for people and you are going to be the best version of you that anyone else can be. Nobody else can be a better version of you. Next is to have a thick skin. You are going to get criticism. You are going to get critique and it is going to hurt. It is. I have cried multiple times during this career over things people have said, over realizations of what my my product of a video that I'm making. Believe me, it hurts when you've put in so much effort and so much time and you get these offhanded comments that don't care at all about your feelings. They're just randomly saying what they think. So have a thick skin as you move forward in your YouTube career. 
Normally, I open this up to q and A. I'll answer a few questions that I normally get. One is, if I have a console, how do I record the console? You need a capture card in order to record a console. console. Google how to capture console for Minecraft, uh, and you'll be able to find it. Uh, next is, how did I get started? I uploaded a uh, project that me and my friends worked on. Um, I uploaded a 48-hour music video contest, and I actually deleted that. That's no longer on YouTube. But really what got me hooked on YouTube is I uploaded a school project. It was a music video for a band that I really liked, and uh, they posted it, or they asked me to post it on their forums, and I did. And I saw views, I saw comments, I saw really a community gather around this video. Up until that point, I wanted to be in movies or TV, and the idea that an audience online could exist and that I was already tapping into them being in high school was mind-blowing, and I totally changed everything to be into online media at that time uh, after I uploaded uh, that project. I think that's just about all the things I normally uh, get asked. If you want to, I'll try to keep, I'm really bad at, one of the reasons I started YouTube is I'm so bad at reading and writing. I'm very dyslexic, but I will try to answer some of your questions in the comments down below. So if you have a question, please put it in the comments and I'll try to get to it. I really hope you guys found this useful. I know this was a super duper long video, so if you made it to the end, congratulations. Let's talk about mind fairs. I'm gonna be at a ton of them coming up. Ne this weekend, I'll be in Sacramento, then I'll be in Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and even Charleston, South Carolina. Tons of places. If you've heard your city or near your, that city, go to mindfair.com to find out more. Any mind fair uh, that's still available for this year, I will be at, so I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching this episode. You're a real trooper for getting this far on into the video. If you like what you see, please give this video a like. Also, leave a comment asking your questions down below, and also make sure you subscribe for future videos, tips, tricks, tutorials, and spotlights here on OMG Craft. Bye!